Guys, today we're speaking with Jason Goldberg. He's running a few different companies right now uh, in the social media space, dealing with influencers and Instagram marketing. And it's really, really interesting to me. I actually reached out to him on LinkedIn uh, this earlier this week, and it piqued my interest for what he was doing. And I was like, let's get him on the podcast. So, Jason, explain to everybody pretty much who you are, what you're doing, and kind of like a brief little overview of what your two companies are and what they're all about. Sure. So um, I'm Jason. I'm the co-founder and president of a company called Viral, and we have a product called Caro, which is an app that finds all of the influencers, press, and media that are your brand's customers, email subscribers, and followers. So, like, if there's a YouTuber with a few hundred thousand subscribers that has bought your product or someone who writes for Forbes that has subscribed to your email list or someone who works at Netflix that follows you on Twitter, we find all those people and we identify them for you so that you can reach out to them and start to work with them. Awesome. Well, so how did you get around to starting the company? Because I feel like you won't just, like, you didn't just wake up one day and were like, all right, I'm going to do this. Or was it like that? Or was it like planned out? <laughs> no, it, it definitely wasn't like that. Um, I I got really interested in influencer marketing in 2013, actually, um, right yeah. when Instagram started to gain popularity and they just released their first set of photo filters. And I I was meeting with someone who had a Facebook page and, and he was explaining to me, he was like, hey, I have um, – I have 100,000 likes on this Facebook page. And you have to remember, this is in 2013. So this is yeah. a long time ago. And he said, yeah, yeah. I just promoted a product for a brand, and, like, it sold out. Everybody bought it. Mm. And all I had to do was post on my Facebook page. And I was like, wow. Like, how much How much did you charge? And he was like, oh, a few hundred bucks. And I couldn't believe it because that yeah. is just so fundamentally different than Google ads or Facebook ads as far as, like, cost per conversion and, and things like that. And he gave like an in-depth review of the product and everything. And it just, it just was so much more real. And I knew that that was going to be big, but it was so early. It was just so yeah. early in social media. And so I, I went to Chapman University and they have um, an incubator program there for entrepreneurs. And I started viral there. And we were, we were trying to find something that influencers really wanted and something that brands really wanted. And we, we tested all sorts of different types of cool things. We, we, we had a mobile app. We had a, a store for influencers to shop for their favorite products. We, we thought about making merchandise for influencers. We were sort of like the analogy that we like to use is we were digging for gold. Um, once, you, once you find that gold, you then go tell investors that you need them to um, pay for a drill so that we can all get it out together. Yeah, so at, yeah. at this point we were uh <laughs> we were looking for the gold. I like that. And and so I uh later down the road I met my awesome co founder named David Perry. Uh we were both mentoring students uh who were interested in entrepreneurship at my high school and I, I came to him, we we had raised a little bit of money and, and we had that this concept of um a store where where influencers could shop for their favorite products. And and he became very interested in that. And he, he had been working at Sony at the time. Sony actually bought his last company. And, and I eventually convinced him to join me. And we we said, well, hey, does it really have to be a store, like a destination? Because the problem with the Internet is that every day there there are more things being developed, like more websites go live, more mobile apps yeah. go live, et cetera, et cetera. But not a single second has been added to a 24-hour day. You're right. So, That's true. So our attention – our attention is just harder and harder to get. And we said, well, I wonder if we could could have this store, but across all stores instead. Um, all their products are already in there. All their websites are already live. They, they have great ways of, of shipping products to people. What if we could do it like that? And so we tried it. And we said, well, well who are they going to want to send products to? Like what kinds of influencers? And it turns out that brands' favorite influencers are influencers that already love them like that are already engaged, that are already interested. Um, the content is just so much more authentic. The influencers are more excited and they're more inspired, and, and they really feel like they're getting to work with brands that, that they want to work with. And yeah, it's just it's so much better of a relationship. So we said, well, what if we, what if we build something where, where we could actually 
find those people. Like you could wake up one day as a brand and you could say, I want to work with influencers on social media. And you could download our app and we can make that possible for you without you really having to do anything else. And yeah. I, I had the, the big brands in mind because we find so many influencers. I mean, sometimes tens of thousands of influencers for them. But I also had the smaller brands in mind that maybe don't really understand Google AdWords yet or don't have a budget for Facebook ads, but would love to partner with a few key creators that could really make a difference for them. And so yeah, you're right. we, 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 um, we, we started to build it, and, and we, we quickly formed a team, and we, we raised some additional money, and, and we released it. Just in March, to the um, we started with the Shopify App Store, actually, and we have we have Magento coming out in just a few months here, um, and and the traction has been phenomenal. We have over 5,200 brands and 2.7 million influencers discovered for those brands. So it's been so it. awesome to see, to to really just see how how badly people want this and how much of a difference it's making. It's so cool to hear the stories about um, the connections that we've helped make between people all around the world. Um, the, our yeah. brands are in 71 countries. So, mm. so we're, we're right now having conversations about well, how to reach. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's been awesome. And we're having conversations right now. Well, well, how do we, we have to do localization. So we have to start to translate our app and our website into a bunch of different languages so that it can be easier for people to use. And we need to start getting 24 seven support up. So that so that yeah. people in Europe and in Asia can have support while we're sleeping over here in North America, and and these no, are definitely. good conversations to have. Like these are these definitely. are the fun things. But um, yeah, I hope that <laughs> I know that was no, kind of a long winded awesome. answer. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. Well, so because you have, because um, when you started Viral, what was the main premise behind Viral? Because the two companies are separated, right? Well, so Carl is owned by Viral. We, we okay. like to think of Viral sort of as like Luxottica. Luxottica is the company that owns like Sunglass Hut, uh, Ray-Bans, and, and many, many other um, I okay, think okay. crafters. So we have all sorts of fun stuff that we want to do, like different types of companies that are sort of in this like influencer e-commerce world. Um, Caro is just our flagship. Caro is the core to that. Okay, okay. Okay, cool, cool. Well, so I'm interested to know pretty much what is – the main goal for Cairo, like five years out from now, what is, what, if you could like strategically plan it to the, to the dot and have all the plans go to the exact way that you want them to go, what would it look like in five years? <laughs> oh my God. If only the world worked that way. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. Um, wow. Well, well, the, the first thing that I'd like to do, that there's a number of things, but the an overarching goal that at least I have personally is I'd like to have all of the influencers that are that are real influencers that are really passionate about what they're doing and what they're creating. I'd love for them to be able to do that full time. So if okay. they if they have another job or they're doing something else part time and they're doing something that they don't want to be doing, and if they could just work with all the brands that they're excited about, and they could create content for. Um, I want them to be able to do that. Like, I feel really, really lucky that I get to do what I love every single day. Like, every time I walk into the office, I, I'm doing what I love. And I want that for more people. So that would make me really happy if, like, millions of influencers and creators and artists and musicians and athletes could, could do what they love full time and really feel like they're going after their dreams. Like, that would be amazing to me. And, no, and on the flip side... I, I'd love to I'd love to facilitate that. So I'd love to show brands that that these these influencers and creators, et cetera, are adding value and that you should really lean in and maybe even double down on influencers and creators. That would be amazing. And I feel like we can do that um because we're installed into the brand stores, we can start to do that via via tracking ROI. And and yeah. we have some fun stuff some fun stuff that I'm not allowed to talk about yet <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. that are coming out. Um, in regards to that, but I would love to just show brands, hey, like these influencers are really, really making a difference for you. Um, I'd like to suggest some more for you to work with. And I feel like every time I'm getting an influencer or a creator, um, another another partnership or collaboration that's mutually beneficial, I'm just I'm getting them close to being able to do what they love if they aren't already. And for the ones no, that are right. that are massive, for for huge influencers, um, I'd love to help you work with brands that you love. 
Like, I'm sure you're doing that to some degree, but if you could only do that, if you could pick any brand and it was really, really easy, that would be yeah. something that would excite me too. And, it, and it's, it's really just because I think the longevity of this space is going to be heavily reliant on authenticity and being yeah. real. And I just, I, I think that the, the era of holding up a product and it's selling, yes, that may have worked in 2013 with my friend's Facebook page, but we're just not there anymore. Yeah. We want yeah. we we want experts and tastemakers. We want reviews. We, we we want to de-risk something before we buy it. We want to be excited about it when it's in the mail, and and we also want it to come in the mail quick. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, right. So it's true. So influencers should shouldn't really like. I'm not so thrilled about the word influencer, and I know most of them aren't either. It's really more like be the expert. Like if you if you're in a studio recording music, like share all of your equipment with people if they like your music and they love how clean it all sounds and high quality. If you're a painter and you make incredible paintings, like well, what canvas and paintbrushes are you using? Where do you get your paint? That's the type of thing that I want to help with. It it, it makes far like more that. sense. And and like the way education is going, like you can learn anything on the internet, especially with things like YouTube. And so if people are inspired by you to get started, and that's kind of the the, the, the third answer to my question. Sorry, to your question is um, yeah. what would I like to do in five years? Well, for every influencer that's trying to do what they love, there's, there's 40,000, 50,000, 100,000, a million people that feel inspired by that person. And yeah. I'd like to think that that influential music artist or that influential painter has, has 100,000 people behind them that, that want to paint and every day that they create content, they're sort of pushing people over the edge to start to do that. Like finally, you're doing, you know, you said you would do it. Um, maybe people said you, you couldn't do it. This influencer is showing you that it's possible and you're, you're excited and you're ready to start. Let's make it really easy for you to get the tools that you need to do what you love. I love that. So, so you have a very, very yeah. pure approach with this because I noticed with the influencer space, there's a whole lot of inauthenticity in it. Um, from multiple angles of it, and it definitely, I think that personally it's going to lower the consumer trust for these influencers in the future if there isn't a solution, and, you know, it looks like you're really, really putting a lot of effort into making a solution for that, and it's working. That's the most beautiful aspect of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, I think the space has to evolve, and I think naturally it already is there just has to be somebody that comes in and really really facilitates that evolution in the right way yeah 100 percent. no you're right well so i want to i'm interested to know what the what your life was like at chapman because you're in this incubator you're growing viral um but you first went into chapman did you have the intention of you know building a company while you were there or did it just come about as you joined the incubator and then your thoughts and ideas arose no, I, I actually did. I showed up knowing that I wanted to start a company. Um, okay. And I, the second I walked on my campus, I knew that it would be a great place to do that. Um, I've, been, I've been in Orange County my whole life, and so it just made sense for me to continue to grow my network locally. Yeah. And yeah. Chapman is just phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful school. The, the incubator, incubator program was great. Um, but when I arrived, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I was going to do something. Um, yeah. So I just started researching, and I just started listening and paying attention to, to what was really going on in the world. And, and when I got there, my freshman year was really like the second wave of social media. Like I mentioned earlier, Instagram really started to rise up. And I just I started to get really interested, because I think there's really two ways to look at social media. Um, and, and I'm sure older generations will resonate with the, you know, you're always looking down at your phone. <laughs> Why yeah. are you doing that? Yeah. You, you need to enjoy the world. Like, go outside. <laughs> and, True. and I, to some, to some degree, I agree with that. I don't think you should be on your phone 24-7. I think that there's a beautiful yeah. world out there that you should go sometime in. <laughs> at the same time, yeah. um, <laughs> the difference is that, at least when I was growing up, my parents would try to tell me to get off the phone, but I was looking at stocks or reading reading the newspaper on a newspaper app or something, um, which yeah. is really all that they would do, but on, on different devices or, or with physical paper. So yeah, th there's so much that you can do on your phone that it's, it's really not 
it's it, it's not like I'm just playing a game or something or I'm, I'm on exactly. social media all day. But but what You're I utilizing found is that progress. yes, what what I found is that it it's a tool and it's a really exciting tool because you can actually start to learn about things that you're interested in. I feel more connected to the world than ever because I can look up what's happening basically in any country. Um, yeah. I can, if I want to learn something, I'm a Google search away from it. If I have to watch a video, then I'm a video away from it. There's a course for everything. There's someone who's an expert at everything. And so if I want to know, if I need the answer to a question and I can find someone with a million followers who, who does that thing every single day, then I can find that answer. And so yeah. I, I look at it really, really differently. I look at it as a way for, for kids and, and adults alike to, to learn something without any boundaries. You don't have to wait for class to start. You don't have to en- enroll in an extensive school. But if you want to learn something, you can start right now. And, and that's so powerful. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm it is. excited You're about right. that. Well, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm so trying to as you were, that. I love it. Well, so as you were, you know, like young and you were on your phone reading stocks and stuff on the newspaper um, and doing stuff like that, that's not, I feel like that's not like a normal activity for someone to be doing, you know, at a young age. So <laughs> what, 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 like, it, what was the catalyst that, started that or piqued that interest to start observing things that are in the business niche and starting to totally. like delve into that. Yeah, there's a there's a big miss, missing piece here. So I was very, very much into competitive video game playing. Okay. Very okay. much into um, all sorts of different types of games. Um, and some of those games you could you could sort of have like a mock stock market in the game. Yeah. And I started to play them, and it turns out that I, I was really good at it. And I got super, super interested into, like, online business, essentially, from there. And I started to set up, like, different game servers where people could come play games, and, and you could, like, buy, like, a premium character or, like, you know, different, like, weapons or, like, different things for your character, and you could, like, buy yeah. them on PayPal. And it really, really started to take off. <laughs> Yeah. And it, we we had servers all over the world, thousands and thousands of players logged on at any given time. I mean, it blew my mind when there were kids that were asking for basically in-game credit for a game that we built for Christmas. Um, <laughs> that was it, it was, and and I was so wow. young at the time, and I I mean I got into online business when I was 12 years old, and wow. I I wow. did that. I I designed websites like very early on. I worked in search engine optimization. Um, early social media management, like when people were yeah. really understanding what Facebook was. I helped people um, when when the iPhone started to get really big. I helped people mobile optimize their websites because they would only really work for desktop. Um, <laughs> all sorts wow. of different types of stuff. And I just you just catch the entrepreneurial bug. And so after after our game servers really started to take off, I I kind of told myself I was never just going to play video games again. Um, I wanted to do business online, yeah. and yeah. and so you know, fast forward, and and here I was at Chapman, really just trying to find what I could do that could that could really turn into something big. No, I love that. Well, so what was it like for your family, parents to kind of observe you as you're doing this at a young age? Well, <laughs> there's sort of a bit of a tipping point. Um, at first, yeah. I thought it was it was cool, like, hey, this is this is interesting. Um, yeah. And then they, when I told them I really wanted to do it. They they weren't so ready to hear that. Um, yeah. And, you know, of course, of course, as a parent, you <laughs> you want your kid to go yeah. to school and get a degree and graduate and everything like that. And and I I was interested in that, but I I had to do this thing first. Like there was sort of like this burning fire inside of me that I just had to fan and I I they started to come around after we raised um, an angel round of funding that yeah. really helped show them that it was real and and they they started to come around then but it was certainly hard um, they did not especially at such a young age they did not understand you know I mean for a while there it was like you know why are you playing video games you should be doing something else 
Um, yeah. They didn't understand that I, <laughs> I attribute so much <laughs> to, to playing video games. Uh, my entire, not only my entire career, um, a, a, a anything from just being able to type quickly to, to my entire future, I believe, will be yeah. working and building things online. So, so I say thank you to video games <laughs> for no, doing that awesome. for me. I know that's not the typical story, but it was it was certainly it was certainly a challenge to kind of get them to come around. But now they're they're so supportive and they they understand, um, you know, because we we've been in this we've been in this bitch for four years now, so so they know that wow. I'm all in, and, yeah, and they've got it. to watch it go from from nothing to where it is. So that's, that's a good question. Amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. No, one hundred percent. That's amazing though. Well, so. Talking about the angel round when you were raising it, what was pretty much, what was your expectations going into, you know, getting an angel investor, raising money, getting seed capital, and then what was it like as opposed to the expectations that you had of it, or did you have, or did you enter it, you know, with zero expectations, just like let's see what happens um, and hope for the best. Yeah, I didn't really. I mean, it was new to me, and I didn't really have so many expectations. It was really just something that we started out of necessity. So, I mean, at some point, you realize that you just can't do everything yourself, and and the 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 power of your team becomes so important, and it's really essential. Um, yeah. Over time, and and there was just more things that we needed. We needed developers, and we needed people to help with marketing. And, and et cetera, et cetera. So at some point we just said, okay, well, we have to go do this. And one thing that I thought was really beneficial to us is, is we've always had a strong sense of growth marketing. And so we, we proved demand for our, our early concept of viral by having influencers sign up. I think we had like 16 or 17,000 sign up before we even launched. And every time wow. an influencer would sign up, um, if you on our website, we had this ticker for how many followers they have combined. All of the influencers yeah. that have signed up. So if we got a big one to sign up, it would go up by like a few million. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I yeah. Just, I had I had some local angel investors who who were interested. You know, they believed in me, and every time they went on my website, that number was higher. And we just kept getting wow. closer and closer to releasing, and eventually, um, eventually, it just sort of started like dominoes. That's really what it is. Is yeah. as, soon, as soon as people start getting really interested and start leaning in, um, others follow. And so it's it, it was it, it definitely met my expectations. I mean, my early investors and, and and my current investors, all and all of my investors have been so phenomenal, um, in in helping and not only with capital but strategically. So it's definitely it was great. It's it's certainly essential. Um, and and you know, if you can do friends and family too, that helps as well. Um, it's really yeah. just kicking something off, getting a prototype, showing that there's a demand, and then really outlining how this thing could be really big, um, because that's what investors want. Investors want, you know, 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 plus X returns from startups. Um, that's what they're yeah. most excited about, and, and they want to be a part of something that that could really shake up an industry. And so that's what they're looking for all day. I mean, most investors say say no to 100, 200, or 400 pitches before they say yes to one. And so you have to ask yourself, well, how can I be that one? Because um, yeah. it's really competitive out there. You're right. It's it's probably one of the most competitive niches to be in is raising capital because everyone wants it. Everybody wants it. It's crazy. But yeah. so I'm interested to know a little bit deeper in regards to like what's one piece of uh, what, what's one thing that you personally believe to be true that almost like 99% of people would disagree with you with. Wow. I don't know if it's 99%, but I do believe that if you want to do something in life, um, as long as it's, it's good for yourself and for the world, that you can do that, whatever it is. And whatever, yeah. it, it, whatever voice in your head that's telling you no, um, your friends that are telling you that you're not good enough, your your family telling you, no, 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 just go do this. It's so much safer. It's so much easier. And it's, it's what I did, so you should do it too. Um, yeah. Those people are wrong. They're just wrong. And and yeah. so if you have something that you're excited about and you're passionate about and you believe that it will make the world a better place, then you should do that and you can do it and you're capable of it. And I know that... No, I love that. Not, not just a lot of people, but I think it's most people out there don't really 
understand that, like they want to believe it, but they just have all this other stuff weighing down on them, telling them no. That yeah, I just I figure if I'm if I'm on the other side of the fence telling them yes, then then maybe I can help. And, yeah. And so that I would say that's the thing that I believe most people are struggling with right now. That I believe. I love it. I love it. Well, so this was awesome, Jason. I want you to let everyone know where they could find out more about Cairo Viral. You also like your personal stuff uh, and where they could pretty much find more info if they want to, you know, sign up, if they want to even, you know, be hired together, hiring um, for jobs and all that good stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if you have a Shopify store, you can go over to getcaro.com and you can download our app. You can also find Caro on the Shopify app store, the size of C-A-R-R-O. And we're going to have Magento in a few months here as well. So if you have a Magento store, you can go to getcaro.com and, and add your store to our waiting list with your email. And, yeah, I think that would be awesome. I think we'd be really excited to see how many influencers we can find for you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it, Jason, and um, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Grant. Yeah, so much fun. Of course.